Hello everyone, I am Fulvio Parisi from University of Naples, Federico II, Italy, where I am Associate Professor of Structural Engineering. First of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee of this conference for inviting me to give this lecture about the use of textile reinforced mortar in the retrofitting of mesory structures. Well, let me emphasize that strong earthworks occurring in the last century uh, have shown that approximately 58% of casualties were caused by heavy damage to mesory structures. This damage can occur in the form of autoplane failures, particularly in historical mesory constructions, and repeated shocks associated with earthquake sequences further increase damage to uh, those constructions. Together with local failures, load bearing mesory walls can suffer in plate damage, especially in piers and spandrels between openings. This is, for instance, what we observe in different areas struck by strong earthquakes, such as L'Aquila, Italy, in 2009. But also in the case of Amatrice, after the Central Italy earthquake sequence in 2016 and 2017, in this slide you can see that irregular distributions of openings can produce damage concentration and hence premature collapse of the building. Another background information for seismic strengthening is that some walls have artifacts, such as frescoes, that do not allow us to install externally bounded reinforcement systems on both sides, but rather onto a single side. Last but not least, strengthening should also allow transverse reinforcement of multi-leaf mesory walls to avoid this type of damage, namely the loss of integrity due to lacking monolithic behavior. Therefore, before selecting a type of strengthening system, we should keep in mind the different types of implant failure that can occur within measuring walls under earthquake ground shaking. In this respect, we know that a measuring wall may suffer flexural or shear failure as shown here. Flexural failure mode is characterized by toy crushing at the basis of the piers. Rather, Shear failure modes may consist of diagonal tension, bad joint sliding, or diagonal sliding failure of the wall. In the last decades, composite materials have been recognized as an effective measure to reduce seismic vulnerability of mesory buildings. Again, we should account for the different types of failure that either the mesory or the composite material may suffer as a background information for an effective strengthening. Indeed, mesory may suffer crashing in compression or bending, tensile failure in shear, or also sliding failure in shear. On the other side, the composite material may suffer either tensile rupture or the bonding failure, which may cause a premature failure of the entire system. In this regard, fiber reinforced polymers are often affected by poor compatibility with existing mesory substrates, sensitivity to environmental conditions, and long term degradation due to several phenomena. Thus, we strongly need to think about alternative composites for strengthening of mesory structures. This motivated a quick development and use of textile reinforced mortars which, for instance, in Italy were extensively used after the 2009 L'Aquila earthquake. TRMs are characterized by excellent compatibility with mesory substrates, ease of application and low evasiveness and reversibility, resulting in durability, safety and preservation of historical built heritage. The installation of TRMs on Mesory substrates is very quick and easy, according to a sequence of at least three steps where we install the first mortar layer, then follow it by the application of FRP grid and the installation of a second mortar layer. However, 
more than two layers of mortar with the intermediate layers of FRP grid can be installed to achieve a stronger TRM. Regarding TRMs, we started our studies in 2008 with the characterization of matrix and FRP grids for the subsequent combination within such a class of composites and finally installation on measuring elements and structures. First of all, we perform an experimental test on single constituents of the TRM. For instance, in this slide, you can see different tests on the anorganic matrix, but we also tested different types of FRP grids. The behavior of the wool TRM is generally like that shown in this diagram, which was derived through tensor tests on TRM prismatic specimens by a shown et al. in 2015, and this was the basis for a qualification method for externally bounded fiber reinforced cement tissue matrix materials in, uh, in Italy. We can see that. This is a sort of trilinear behavior with stage first associated with uncracked conditions, stage second related to crack development, and stage third consisting in widening of matrix cracks and hence overall stiffness approximately equal to that of the fabric. The current issue is that a global consensus on a standard testing procedure is still lacking. Measure issues are associated with the gripping system, which allows the specimen to be anchored to the testing machine. For instance, the use of clamping and clavis systems produce different behavior modes of the TRM due to different states of stress at the end parts of the specimen. In addition to the issue of the experimental setup, there is also a huge variability of stress-strain behavior depending on the constituent materials and geometry of the TRM, as shown in this slide, where you can see large differences in terms of both strength and strain capacity. This table further highlights the huge variability of material properties depending on the TRM, also called FRCM, grip system, matrix, and type of fibers. So we performed experimental tests on both stone and atom measuring strengthening to TRMs in order to investigate whether and how those composites influence the shear behavior of measuring walls in their own plane. Starting from tough stone measuring specimens, we applied TRM on single and both sides of the walls. Here you can see the textile geometry and also the different layers of the TRM system. Then we also investigated the influence of TRMs with transverse connections consisting of SFRP ties anchored within the TRM itself. This is an interesting application of TRMs that allows their installation on walls that have only a single accessible side, as previously shown in case of walls with frescoes. Then, we performed tests on measure constituents, namely in this case, tough stones and lime mortar. Regarding the former ones, we uh, performed compressive tests, but also direct tensor tests in order to uh, derive an estimation of compressive strengths, tensor strengths, Young's modulus, but also shear modulus indirectly. Similar tests were conducted on line mortar specimens in order to have similar properties of the material. Then we also performed a mechanical characterization of TRM constituents, namely the anorganic matrix and the GFRP grid, in order to have an estimate of their compressive strengths, tensor strengths, Young's modulus in both cases. Finally, 
we fabricated TRM strength and measuring wallets, which were tested under diagonal compression loading with displacement control in order to measure the post peak softening branch of load displacement diagrams and hence stress strain diagrams. Here you can see also the specific instrumentation we use for load application and measurements of deformations and load itself. In this slide, you can see that all specimens suffer a typical stair step at diagonal cracking, but wallets with single side strengthening also experienced out of plane bending due to the asymmetric configuration of the strengthening system. And here is the stress strain diagrams according to Ryland and ASTM standards, which indicate a very good effectiveness of the TRM system to improve both shear strength and pseudo-ductility compared to traditional reinforced plaster that, however, also produces an increase in mass and stiffness, namely negative effects in case of seismic strengthening. We then move to similar tests on add-on measuring wallets. And in this experimental program, we also investigated the influence of hemp grids instead of grass meshes as a sustainable material for strengthening of other measuring constructions. This is the typical configuration we use for the fabrication and installation of TRM systems. And here you can see the other bricks which were produced according to traditional rules of practice observed in Sardinia Island, Italy, where many historical buildings are made of Adam masonry. We carefully produced the hemp reeds through a square timber frame. Here you can see that the GFR brick reed was a biaxial acryl resistant glass coated net with approximately 225 grams per square meters unit weight and 1.77% as ultimate strain. Such a reinforcement was embedded in the mortar and then we uh, used the bidirectional mesh of hemp cores, which was installed according to a specific on-site fabrication process. As shown before, we thus started from testing of constituent materials. Then we moved to diagonal compression tests, in this case using a mobile experimental setup that can be useful for on-site testing of historical measure reconstructions. And we did it after L'Aquila 2009 earthquake. Based on stress strain curves, we defined different performance levels and characterize the mechanical behavior of the measure wallets in terms of shear modulus, strength, and pseudo-adaptivity factor. While we observed a typical diagonal cracking on URM and HTRM specimens, namely those specimens strengthening using hand fibers, wallets strengthening using TRM with glass fiber meshes experienced the bonding failure which strongly influenced the overall behavior and performance of the strengthening wall. This produced a better performance of measuring wallets strengthening using hemp fiber grids. Such experimental curves show a linear elastic branch up to first cracking and a linear branch up to peak stress, followed by a post-peak softening branch up to failure. But we also can see that there was a large dispersion in both strength and strain capacity, especially in the post-peak range. However, it is important to stress that a huge variability and dispersion of stresses and strains was found. This should be kept in mind within our computations because single values of material properties can result in an apparent deterministic nature of capacity. Here you can see statistical tau gamma diagrams for URM, GTRM, and HTRM specimens according to ASTM standard. 
And also you can see that there was a, a different value of the mean of this variation in terms of uh, difference between 84th and 16th percentiles divided by the 15th percentile, there is the median value of the shear stress condition upon the shear strain. As a matter of fact, variability depends on material properties, the geometric configuration of the mesury and TRM, and also the mechanical behavior under diagonal compression, which is governed by possible weakness in the central part of the wallet, as shown in this slide. So, this produces a strong need for statistical assessment of mechanical behavior and probabilistic analysis. These aspects were considered into a theoretical study aimed at developing capacity models for TRM strengthening measuring walls. According to the literature, lateral capacity can be regarded as the minimum between those related to shear and flexural failures. Shear strength can be modeled according to, for instance, ACI guidelines. On the other side, flexural capacity can be analytically predicted using this kind of model, which was first proposed by my research group in 2011. This is also called the meso model for flexural strands. And here you can see a different modeling of the URM, FRCM matrix, and also FRCM grid. We thus recently performed a comparative assessment of different TRM models, including the meso model we previously proposed. Other models are those proposed by Italian guidelines issued by the National Research Council of Italy. There is CNR, the bilinear model, and the trilinear model, according to this slide. In case of Mesori, we can use, for instance, a simplified constitutive model, namely that shown in this slide. In the meso model, we distinguish between matrix and single fibers, whereas in the others, we assume that the TRM is a homogeneous material. After that, we selected experimental statistics from a review paper. We define different limits in terms of stress and strain for each model and performance level, including the bounding feeder. This is the simple geometric configuration we assume in this theoretical study, considering the cross-section geometry, but also defining the geometry of the FRCM system, that is the TRM system in this case. Fabric spacing was also considered in the meso model by our research group. This slide shows the moment curvature diagrams obtained under the assumption of no debounding failure. The CNR model results in a monotonically increasing curve as the matrix contribution is neglected. Consequently, the limit curvature corresponding to matrix failure cannot be defined. In the case of the meso model, you can also see that further nonlinearity is associated with the number of fibers in tension, which also produce a strength degradation on the moment curvature diagram. Instead, these are the moment curvature diagrams without consideration of the bonding, but in the case of bilinear and trilinear models. You can see here that the softening branch of the mesoscopic bilinear and trilinear models begins where the matrix is cracked and subsequently softens, since the contribution of the matrix begins to weaken. The ultimate curvature corresponding to fiber rupture was observed under axial low ratios lower than 0.2, while observing mesory crashing under larger levels 
of axial load ratio that is larger than 0.2. Then we reperformed this analysis, namely a moment curvature analysis of the cross section, considering the uh, effect of the bonding failure. Here you can see the moment curvature diagrams in case of meso model and CNR model. And we can also uh, see that there was no significant impact on such models because most of peak strength degradation is associated with the gradual failure of the matrix in compression. There is a realistic simulation. In general, the moment curvature diagrams depends on strain thresholds corresponding to measuring crashing in compression and TRM debonding in, in tension. In case of grass TRM, if the bonding strength is rather lower than the ultimate strength corresponding to tensile raptor of fibers, with measured influence, particularly if bilinear and trilinear homogenized models are used. So this slide shows that the bonding failure significantly affects the global behavior of the TRM strength and section, depending on the TRM model. However, on one hand, the CNR model produces conservative safety checks for the ultimate state. On the other, the meso model allows a more realistic simulation of the mechanical behavior, considering softening due to matrix cracking. We also dealt with the uncertainties in our load binning capacity investigation. We then performed a probabilistic study on externally strengthening walls, including a tough stone measuring, single ply double side EBR systems, and these systems consisted of either FRP systems or TRM systems. The methodology was based on two. Uh, 180 uh, case study walls, which were derived by uh, permutations of wall geometric properties and EBR type. We then characterized uncertainties in material properties, geometry, and capacity models. We then performed a Monte Carlo simulation in order to propagate those uncertainties for each case study wall and axial load level, and then derived probabilistic equations for in-plane capacity prediction. Then we uh, considered two uh, geometric configurations of FRP and TRM systems. Then we assume a different statistics and probability distributions for each uh, category. Uh, there is mate material, geometry, and model of uh, uh, random variables. This allowed us to obtain probabilistic capacity models for externally strengthening walls. In this slide, you can see limit strength domains of each case study wall at different percentile levels. And particularly, you can see the median, but also different percentiles of conditional lateral strength given the axial low level. On the right hand side of this slide, you can also see a log normal probability density function of lateral strengths given the axial load level. Then we perform a robust nonlinear regression analysis in order to estimate median values of limit strengths uh, through a quadratic polynomial function, which is shown in this slide. Uh, then we uh, obtain it simplified equations in dimensions format in order to predict the regression coefficients for each wall type that is as built, FRP strengthened, or TRM strengthened. Here you can see also the probabilistic uh, format of the uh, interaction domains for FRP strengthened measurement walls. You can see also that the coefficient of variation of lateral strength condition on the axial level ranges from 
about uh, 25% to about uh, uh, 35%. And uh, here you can see its counterpart in case of uh, TRM strengthened wall. In this slide, you can see the implant capacity variation as a function of the aspect ratio. That is the ratio between the height and length of the of the vasory wall. You can see that the aspect ratio equal to two produces about 17% uh, uh, mean reduction of lateral strength, which increases to 34% in case of aspect ratio equal to three. And this motivates uh, why the, uh, for instance, Italian building code issued in 2018 establishes uh, an upper bound value for the inclusion in capacity models. That means an upper bound value of the aspect ratio uh, for the inclusion in capacity models. This is acceptable, but uh, uh, aspect ratios equal to four or even equal to five produces about 84% or even 97% mean reduction of lateral strength. But in this slide, we can also see the implant capacity increase as a function of the accelerator level, uh, distinguishing between the effects of FRPs and TRMs. Then we perform a full scale experimental testing on the implant seismic response of URM walls with openings considering different types of uh, TRM systems for their uh, strengthening. And this slide shows the wall geometry along with vertical forces simulating gravity loads which were applied on top of both piers. They were equal to 200 skidonewtons. And then we applied uh, lateral loading with displacement control in this case, denoted by F sub H. This uh, geometry of the wall allowed us to uh, avoid any predefined boundary condition imposed to the spandrel, allowing the spandrel itself to dissipate energy and suffer most part of damage. As shown here, we perform a different quasi-static test with displacement control to access performance at different drift levels and hence different damage states of the wall. Particularly, we perform the first series of tests on specimens having a timber lintel above the central opening. In more detail, we perform a monotonic loading test on the S-bit wall then followed by a cycling loading test on pre-damaged wall, and finally ending with the cyclic loading test on TRM strengthening wall. Here you can also see on the right hand side of the slide the target displacement and history we use as input uh, to apply displacement control. The second series of tests was performed on specimens with mesory arch above the opening. And this series of tests consisted of a cyclic loading test on the SBIT wall, followed by a cyclic loading test on the TRM strengthening wall. We ended the experimental campaign with uh, tests on specimens with mesory arch and RC bond beam, having the same configuration, the same overall configuration of the first walls. In this slide, you can see the spandrel with wooden lintel above the opening. Uh, it is also shown that the geometry of the wall consisted of uh, length equal to about uh, 5 meters and a height uh, over 3.5 meters. The wooden lintel was simply anchored within the piers with bond length equal to uh, approximately 150 millimeters. 
reinforced concrete beams were fabricated at the base of the piers in order to uh, provide support to the piers themselves. After the first monotonic test on the S-built spacemen, we then uh, uh, observed a diagonal crack in the spandrel, and then we filled the cracks with mortar in order to uh, perform a repair of the spandrel panel above the opening, which was followed uh, by uh, stage number two, where we apply to uh, the spandrel a TRM system on both sides of the spandrel. This stage was uh, uh, made of a first matrix layer application, followed by a grid application, and then uh, uh, followed by the closure of the TRM system with a second matrix layer installation. As I told you before, we also performed a lateral loading test on full scale measuring walls, having a spandrel with a timber lintel above the opening, which was uh, also repaired and strengthening along the spandrel uh, through a TRM or let's say FRCM system on both sides. In this case, the grid overlapping of the TRM system was approximately equal to 100 millimeters. In this slide, this is also shown the spaceman having a spandrel with mesory arch above opening. That mesory arch was uh, a shallow element, having a rise to length ratio equal to 1 to 5th. The sectional arch depth was equal to 300 millimeters, and we again apply the double side strengthening with two uh, vertical SFRP ties, which were additional elements in order to avoid diagonal cracking in the spandrel. Then we ended the experimental campaign with the spandrel with mesory arch above the opening, but also the RC bond beam on top of the spandrel. In this case, we uh, replicated uh, RC bomb beam as those observed in uh, historical masonry buildings, which means uh, uh, that uh, the bomb beam was partially effective uh, to develop uh, plastic hinges uh, at uh, the uh, peer spandrel uh, interfaces. Now, as you can see here, we use linear variable differential transformers to measure flexural deformations together with wire potentiometers to measure shearing deformations. Here you can see both front and back sides of the wall system, where we uh, measure the shearing deformations uh, along diagonal lines of the piers and spandrel uh, panels of the wall system. We uh, also assumed that pier spandrel joint panels were uh, rigid, and this hypothesis was confirmed by uh, measurements of the wall behavior, but also by the observed damage, uh, which did involve uh, those regions uh, of the wall system. Uh, let me uh, show you also uh, the potentiometer number one uh, on the opposite side uh, of, the, of the wall with respect to the actuator side, uh, which provided wall displacement readers to be associated with load cell readers in order to plot force drift curves of the wall. In terms of structural response and observed damage, here we can see the S-bit spandrel with wooden lintel, uh, which uh, suffered diagonal cracking, uh, but also some uh, uh, minor cracks at its uh, end sections according to flexural demand. On the right hand side of this slide, uh, you can see the force drift scar, which was uh, a uh, bilinear behavior uh, limited uh, by diagonal cracking in the spandrel, which caused a 50% force drop. And the linear response uh, before was limited by flexural cracks in the piers. Hence, 
The TRM Strength and Expander with the timber lintel above the opening performed very well, uh, showing a very good recentering capacity uh, as shown by the residual drift, which is here indicated as 8% per of the maximum drift. This means that the uh, TRM strengthening systems uh, allow uh, also repairability after damage. And uh, also you can see here uh, a very large deformation uh, of the pier and the spandrel itself, uh, which uh, behaved as a sort of uh, accumulator of energy uh, according to its increased uh, energy dissipation capacity owing to the application of the TRM system. You can also see at the base of the piers uh, very, very uh, large cracks which uh, allowed the piers to uh, perform with uh, very large horizontal displacements according to a uh, rocking behavior of those elements. Accordingly, in this slide, you can see the different stages of the spandrel from the installation to removal of the TRM system. On the left hand side of the slide, uh, it is shown uh, uh, a very uh, initial configuration of the spandrel after repair and TRM strengthening, which was followed by the cyclic test on the wall system. And hence the uh, central uh, picture uh, showing us uh, the spandrel after the cyclic test. Again, the spandrel uh, dissipated a lot of energy by uh, spreading of cracking. And uh, nevertheless, uh, this allowed us to remove quickly and easily uh, the TRM strengthening system after the test to uh, demonstrate the uh, repairability and reversibility uh, of the TRM system. A similar structural response was found uh, with respect to the S-bit specimen with the timber uh, lintel above the opening in case of a spandrel with shallow masonry arch above the opening. Uh, the overall geometry of the specimen was the same uh, but uh, uh, we uh, observed a, a premature failure of the, of the wall system together with uh, a moderate recentering capacity with the residual drift which was found to be uh, about 23% uh, of the maximum drift capacity. So this test was uh, uh, prematurely uh, stopped at about uh, 0.9% uh, of wall drift. The structural response of the TRM strengthening spandrel with mesory arch in the wall system was uh, characterized by approximately no damage uh, to the spandrel panel. And this was uh, according to uh, the installation of vertical SFRP ties, which allowed us to avoid uh, diagonal cracking in, the, in that uh, element of the wall. But uh, conversely, we observed a premature failure uh, associated with uh, diagonal cracking in the pier because the entire wall system behaved as a sort of a shear type portal frame uh, where we observed a residual drift uh, of about 50% of the maximum drift uh, evidencing a, a very small uh, recentering capacity and hence repairability uh, of this uh, alternative configuration of TRM strengthening system. This type of failure in the case of the peer is uh, further uh, shown in detail in this slide where you can see uh, the motivation behind the uh, reduction in drift capacity of the entire wall system. Conversely, the structural response uh, of the wall system having a spandrel with mesory arch and RC bomb beam on top was very good, as confirmed by this type of forces uh, drift curve. Uh, 
uh, under cyclic loading, uh, which shows uh, a residual drift uh, equal to 5%, even 5% of maximum drift. Hence, uh, indicating a very high uh, displacement capacity together with a very high uh, lateral uh, resisting force and also a very good recentering capacity and hence the repairability level of the, of the wall. The ultimate limit state of the wall system was thus reached when the, uh, the mesory crashing at the base of the piers was observed. In all cases, damage observed uh, on spandrels was uh, practically the same. Uh, there is consisting of uh, diagonal cracks, uh, but uh, uh, this uh, was uh, somewhat different in case of the application of the TRM strengthening system, both uh, on the wall system having a timber lintel above the opening and in the case of the same system but having a mesory arch above the opening, uh, we also uh, reached uh, a strongly different wall drifts at failure, ranging from 0.9% to uh, even 2.9% uh, in case of wall system having a mesory arch uh, above the opening, together with a RC bond beam on top. And these pictures show us uh, uh, the progression of failure within the um, spandrel panel with the mesory arch uh, above the opening and also RC bond beam on top. Uh, these pictures are in fact uh, uh, related to uh, an increasing wall drift uh, ranging from 0.7% to even 2.7%. Uh, demonstrating a very high dissipation capacity of the entire world system uh, where both peers were connected to each other uh, uh, up to failure uh, according to an effective action uh, from the uh, RC bomb beam on top, which also suffered a sort of plastic hinging uh, approximately at end sections of the spender panel above the opening. In these slides, you can see also uh, dam the damage to peers uh, was uh, uh, significantly affected by uh, very large cracks at the base of the peers with a crack width uh, of approximately uh, 30 millimeters. And this was followed by toy crashing at the ultimate limit state of the wall system. Those large cracks at the base of the peers induced large percent of rigid body rotations. There is rocking behavior of the piers again uh, with uh, large drift capacity allowing also uh, small residual drifts uh, to uh, indicate a good recentering capacity of the entire wall system. The envelopes of experimental force drift curves further highlight a very good effectiveness of both RC bomb beam on top of the spandrel and TRM strengthening systems supplied on both sides of the spandrel. In this case, we observe a mean strength increase of about 20% after TRM strengthening of the first piece, namely that uh, having a spandrel with the timber lintel above the opening. And we also observe the lowest resistance in case of uh, uh, spandrel with arch which, however, increased increase of about 50% in case of RC bomb beam and even 60% after TRM strengthening. Therefore, in conclusion, uh, experimental testing showed that the macromechanical behavior of TRM under monotonic tensile loading can be uh, rather accurately described through a trilinear stress-strain diagram, where tensile failure can be either brittle or quasi-brittle, depending on the failure mode uh, of the TRM. That is, if tensile strength of the fabric is attained or a relative fabric matrix slippage is observed. The experimental characterization of the tensile behavior 
However, he is strongly affected by the setup adopted, uh, and this requires uh, more action uh, to get a global consensus uh, on the setup to be used uh, in terms of gripping system applied to the specimen ends. Indeed, we observed that uh, clevis grip systems should be preferred over their clamping counterparts to allow a more realistic boundary condition where a gradual fabric matrix slippage can take place. By contrast, clamping grip systems allow a complete macromechanical characterization because tensile failure and tensile behavior, the wool tensile behavior of each constituent can be reached. At the end, we can also observe that the relative stiffness of matrix and fabric constituents has a major impact on the overall stress-strain behavior. In fact, large crack propagation or crack concentration is observed depending on the lower or high Young's modulus of the fabric reinforcement, respectively. Further key information was uh, obtained through diagonal compression tests. Indeed, they have shown significant enhancement of both shear strength and pseudoductility of mesolite wallets. Particularly, TRM composites applied on to a single side of mesolite walls generate secondary out-of-plane bending deformations, and this may result in a more brittle failure mode of the mesolite wall with lower capacity increase compared to the best option for a, a TRM strengthening, namely uh, that applied on both sides of the wall. TRM systems mainly influence the post-peak behavior, increasing both the residual lateral strength and deformation capacity after cracking. And this cracking is associated with a stress redistribution intention. So, Cracking is a key parameter, is a key phenomenon to be uh, simulated in the capacity modeling uh, of this type of uh, uh, measuring walls. Finally, we perform a lateral loading test on full scale measuring walls with openings, demonstrating a very good effectiveness of TRM systems particularly those installed on both sides of spandrels again. Mean strength increased about 20% after TRM strengthening, but this was the case of spandrel with the timber lintel above the opening. Furthermore, in case of spandrel with the mesory arch, with shallow mesory arch above the opening, we even obtained a 60% increase after TRM strengthening. Besides, we performed a different numerical simulations in order to investigate different options for modeling of TRM and TRM strengthening measuring walls. Indeed, different TRM models can be used and were investigated for this kind of simulation, which highlighted the very uh, important uh, considerations about uh, measure failure modes regarding mesory, TRM, and also uh, the bone strength. In this respect, meso modeling can be uh, an effective option uh, in order to distinguish between the contributions from fibers and matrix at different sectional depths. And these allow us to go beyond uh, simplified code based models. Again, we can uh, also uh, simulate the bonding failure, which uh, appears to be a significant uh, phenomenon to be reproduced, particularly in case of bilinear, trilinear constitutive models. Conversely, the mesoscopic model by my research group and the simplified model issued by the National Research Council of Italy result in nonlinear behavior of TRM strengthened measuring walls allowing a gradual reproduction of uh, matrix cracking, which produces uh, beneficial effects 
uh, on the resistance and also the formation capacity. Uh, this motivates uh, a recommendation because uh, uh, meso modeling can provide more realistic predictions and this is particularly recommended for seismic fusion analysis of retrofitted ULM buildings. On the other side, for uh, safety checks uh, for the ultimate living state, we can also use the CNR model, uh, which uh, produces conservative uh, estimates uh, of uh, flexural capacity. We have uh, thus uh, uh, several uh, uh, indications about potential future uh, developments in this kind of uh, uh, studies. There is a strong need for a global consensus on a standard testing procedure, and this is a, a, a prerequisite for a, a correct uh, modeling uh, of the TRM and also uh, of its effects on the behavior of uh, mesory walls. In this respect, multi-scale experimental testing plays a, a very important role in the characterization and modeling of TRM behavior, but also on, the, on its influence on the overall structural behavior of retrofitting mesory structures. The nonlinear flexural capacity model we uh, proposed several uh, years ago and, we, and that we recently used for uh, comparative assessment uh, of different TRM models could be used in different applications, for instance, to develop flexural hinge models for simplified macro element models of load building measurement walls with openings but also to run direct integration throughout the macroelement volume to derive force displacement curves in uh, advanced, namely distributed plasticity models of measuring walls. But let me emphasize another aspect, which is the very huge uncertainty we have in capacity models. This should be investigated and considered in safety checks, calling for a comprehensive probabilistic analysis of different measuring TRM combinations and also different wall geometries. Let me conclude this uh, uh, presentation by acknowledging uh, different funding institutions, starting from the European Union, the uh, National Department of Civil Protection in Italy, but also several ministries and uh, uh, other institutions uh, at both uh, national and regional levels. We uh, also cooperate with uh, different research institutions, uh, which uh, allowed us to perform different kinds of uh, uh, experimental and theoretical studies and we also benefited from the interaction with the different standard bodies, associations and societies at uh, different uh, uh, territorial levels. Finally, I want to uh, thank my research group, uh, namely my research fellows, and my PhD students and also postdocs uh, at University of Naples Federico II. Uh, who uh, perform me every day uh, different kinds of studies within the stone lab uh, but also in the rice lab about the multi-hazard safety and resilience of civil engineering systems. We uh, are now trying to uh, uh, make a technology transfer according to uh, our uh, studies uh, using uh, uh, our uh, knowledge within the activities of a spin-off company uh, which is named Forensics and namely Forensic Engineering Services where I am the head of the Civil uh, uh, Engineering and Risk uh, Business Unit. Some of the findings in both theoretical and experimental studies I have shown in this lecture uh, are uh, found also in uh, recent textbooks on measuring buildings, 
which I had the pleasure to uh, write uh, with uh, uh, renowned uh, colleagues, uh, both in Naples with uh, Professor Nicola Ugenti, and this is uh, uh, the textbook uh, named Theory and Practice uh, of uh, uh, Strach Measuring Structures, uh, which was published in 2019 by Hapley in Milan. Uh, unfortunately, this is uh, the Italian version of this textbook, but, uh, but I hope uh, to uh, write the English version in uh, next years. And here you can see also uh, a new book uh, I had the pleasure to write with uh, my uh, colleagues and friends, professors Umberto Varum, Nicola Tarque, and Dr. Uh, Dora Silveira uh, from Portugal. Uh, this textbook uh, is the book. Uh, we uh, wrote on structural characterization and seismic retrofitting of uh, ad hoc constructions. This uh, uh, book uh, includes both experimental and numerical developments in, on the topic. Uh, and here you can see uh, different types of, uh, of contents. More in detail, you can see a multi scale discussion from the material scale to that of entire structure systems, uh, also including non-destructive and minor destructive testing procedures, uh, seismic strengthening techniques, and different strategies for numerical simulation uh, of other structures. And this textbook was published uh, by Springer, uh, ending with the research developments and needs on seismic performance and strengthening of other constructions. So thank you for your attention and best regards to all of you. Thank you.